If we do the PCA in the same way as we did with the spectral data, well then we get a plot that looks similar. The loadings now though are discrete because we have only 10 variables, not the 300 that we were looking at before. And since they are not correlated by nature, these loadings do not look smooth in the sense that they did before. But we do exactly as we did before. We try to find the first component in such a way that that best describes all the different samples. And the score value will give us the amount of that loading vector in the different samples. And as before, we can take more components if we want to. And as before, we get scale score values for every sample and we can use those score values and plot them in a score plot. And if we do that, in this case, we get a plot which is quite similar to the plot that we saw before. So we can see here that we can even use the lab data to distinguish between the different, um, different factories. And that would not have been possible if we only used an individual measurement, if we used one particular of the lab measurements. We have to use all of them in order to make this classification into different uh, subgroups. And you can see that the chemical and the spectral data in this case are more or less providing the same information, at least with respect to the different sugar plants. The spectral data though are much cheaper to measure and you can do it online. You don't have to have technicians and a laboratory in order to be able to make those measurements but that's not the important part uh, here. You will also see that the percentage of variance explained on the axis in the two score plots are very different, but that's not really important in this case. The spectral data will typically have a first component that explains what appears to be most of the variation, but because the data are very precise, you can easily extract significant components explaining only very small percentages of variation, even below 1%. That has to do with the signal-to-noise ratio in the data. If we want to understand what is going on in the data, well then we often have to consult the loadings that describe the variables. And we can make a biplot to see exactly why different groups of samples appear in different of the score plot. Here you see the loadings from the discrete data and you can see that for example two of uh, the components the clarity has a loading of 0.22 and minus 0.49. And if we plot that in the loading plot for all the variables well then we get a plot of the relation between the different uh, variables. We can see that some are correlated and some are influential and some are less influential. And we can add that on top of the scores to get our biplot. And now we can see why, for example, the C samples, the group of samples from the plant called C, appears to the right in the score plot. Apparently they have more color, they have more amino N, etc. These are not attractive properties in this case, so that means that factory C is of lesser quality than factory B and A. So, to review PCA, we get a decomposition model, a model of our data matrix X into scores and loadings and residuals. Every component consist of a score and a loading. So the first component would be score 1 and loading 1. The second component component would be score 2 and loading 2, etc. And then we have the residuals which will have the same size as our original data. The variance explained is important. That is a number that is often used and assessed before you do any interpretation of, for example, a plot. The percentage explained variance comes from the modeling of the data. If you multiply score 1 and loading 1, you get a matrix which is rank 1, 
and which is an approximation of your original data. If that approximation is perfect, well then your percentage at variance explained by the first component would be 100%. If it's not a perfect approximation, well then the percentage is lower. And PCA is defined in such a way that the first component will have the highest explained variance. And then the next component will have the next highest, etc., etc. This is useful because we then know that in order to look at the bulk of the variation, we have to look at the first components. The first components are always the most important ones from a percentage variance explained a point of view. PCA is a very useful method, especially for handling complex data. But PCA assumes that your data are relevant. It is your responsibility to make sure that the data you are analyzing are really relevant for the problem that you are interested in. In the plot shown here, the same score plot is shown in two different ways. In the left plot, the different samples, the different objects, are colored according to their status of being sick or healthy. We can see that there is a very nice separation between sick and healthy, so it seems that with these data we can distinguish between sick and healthy persons, at least to some extent. In the right plot we have the exact same data, but now they are color-coded by the gender. And suddenly we see that there is no information about the gender in these two uh, components. So whether it's relevant to look at the most um, varying components, well that depends on the data, on how the data are related to the problem that you're looking into. So high variance does not mean information per definition. That just means high variance. And whether that's relevant for you, that is something that has to be assessed based on the problem and based on your knowledge of the problem and your knowledge about the data. But altogether, the PCA model provides an overview of your data. You have scores and loadings, and they tell you something about the samples and about the variables. The residuals also contain important information about what you cannot explain with your model. The PCA model is an exploratory model. You can learn from data instead of having to know beforehand what you want to show with your data. You can also use it for data reduction. Instead of 100 original variables, you just stick with 5 latent variables. And we have already seen that it's very useful for outlier detection, but also, for example, for classification in models such as the Simca model, which is a classification model specifically based on the PCA model.